Hi all and welcome to a new video. I apologize if this is coming out a little later than I normally do. I have been sick and recording has been a little tough considering I've been a little under the weather and my voice hasn't sounded the best. I think this is good enough where I'm not going to be mad at myself for doing it. So let's get into the faction breakdown of the Empire. The Empire is a suppressive gunline machine, cranking out shots with solid infantry and letting you overwhelm the enemy with sheer force. They are an interesting faction in that everything is viable. They have been well balanced and nearly top tier for the entire life of Legion. If any of these units interest you, you can build a list around them or with them, and they work. Now, obviously you still have to look for synergies, but still, everything is a viable take. Empire is also currently the top of the meta with the Blizzard Force, which is a battle force that gives them access to some cool little things that is making them the top of the game right now. Now, I know for every other faction I have overwent their strengths, but the Empire's strengths are based into their basic breakdown. They are good at what they do, and they are also probably one of the easiest factions in Legion to play. Starting out with the Empire-only command cards. These came with the Imperial Specialist expansion, and they are really hard to find pictures of online for some reason. Covert Observation is a one-pip, and lets you look at up to two random command cards from your opponent's hand. This is a super situational mind game card, but it also gives one order to special forces or an operative unit, and can help you know what's going to come next and play around it. Pin Down is a two-pip, and it gives orders to two support or heavy units. After a friendly heavy or support unit performs an attack against a unit with a face-up order token, you shuffle that token back in. Very good to mess with the enemy activation cycle. Coordinated Fire is a 3-pip and activates 3 corpse units. After a friendly corp unit has taken a ranged attack, if it spent an aim token, a unit at range 1-2 to two may gain 1 aim token. A nice way to spread the aim tokens around. Vader's Command Cards Vader's Command Cards allow him to dominate the battlefield in multiple ways, and he does have 6 that you can mix and match between his operative and his commander. If I am wrong in this, let me know in the comments, but I'm 99% certain everything I read online said we could do this. Implacable is an amazing one pip. At the end of his first activation, he can suffer one wound to have his token reshuffled in. However, he does have to do one fewer action on that second activation. However, this is just great and a good way to get him to do something more. New ways to motivate them lets you get two units in a better position or make them a bit stronger. However, it is just kind of okay as you get a wound token and that usually kills a model. It's better used on Vader himself or something with more than one health, so you're not killing something to give it that free action. Master of Evil is a great dodge token generator and gives out three suppression tokens to all enemy units in a range 1-2 to two area. This is super good to buff the already amazing suppression token generation the Empire has access to. Now, Operative Vader's command cards. Vader's Might gives him the ability to choose a non-heavy unit at range 1 and move it anywhere within range and height 1 of its current position. You then roll white defense dice for each many in the unit and they suffer a wound for every pip and surge. A pretty good way to mess with the enemy's deployments. Fear and Dead Men gives a good buff to Vader's Deflect and lets him have the ability to deflect multiple times by allowing him to keep gaining dodge tokens. Darkness Descends can be revealed at the Deploy Unit step, and is the main reason you take this. He's got Infiltrate and Scout 1, and must be deployed at the end of setup. General Veer's Command Cards give decent buffs to Vehicle Heavy or Mixed Combined Arms lists. Maximum Firepower gives you a good attack, and when used as an opener to a game can make the enemy pause, especially with the Immune Deflect. Evasive Maneuver gives two Vehicles Orders, Dodge Tokens, and Outmaneuver which lets you cancel crits with dodges, which is pretty useful, especially for vehicles. Imperial Discipline lets you get a decent amount of orders out, and also lets you get rid of some suppression tokens as well. Beerus is an all-around okay command card unit, probably one of the weaker ones of the Empire. Palpatine's command cards are really good. And Now You Will Die is a great way to perform extra attacks, and super situational, as it could be done as a way to nuke a section of a board with proper positioning. Immobilized tokens reduce your unit speed up to zero as well. Given to your anger is a great way to mess with your enemy's current plan, and shut down the unit for the next battle round as well, 
by choosing an enemy unit to be force activated. And if it doesn't attack, it gets force suppression tokens. An entire legion gives orders to every eligible unit within range 3. This is fantastic, and a lot like Yoda's command card, the reason you take Palpatine. Next up are Krennic's command cards. Krennic's cards give you a decent amount of complex maneuvers, making him an interesting pick. His 1-pip is a great way to, in essence, get 4 orders out of a 1-pip. It is a great, and you should always bring it. Deploy the Garrison is a great way to give standby to two of your troopers for free. After an enemy unit attacks, moves, or performs an action, if that unit is at range 1-2 to two and in line of sight of a unit with a standby token, that unit may spend that standby token to perform a free attack or a free move action. Considering Orson Krennic is there to buff Death Troopers and Shore Troopers mainly, to make a kind of Rogue One thematic list, at least in my mind, this is super useful for those units. Annihilation Looms gives each enemy and friendly unit one suppressive token, and at round 5 or 6 it gives two suppressive tokens, no line of sight needed. This is interesting, but not amazing. There are probably better generic or normal 3 pips that you could take that would be a little bit more situational, especially for a 3 pip. However, if played right and correctly, this could shut down your enemy for an entire round. Aiden has four command cards, which is a bit unique. Her first one pip gives Aiden Sharpshooter 2 and an aim token, and at the end of her turn she gets a dodge and a standby. This is a great way to get a lot of options for Aiden, considering she already has a ton. Concussive Blast gives Aiden a new weapon attack that is five red dice and blast, scatter, and suppressive. It also lets her recover. Her other two pip has her droid give an enemy unit three suppression tokens. And if they have a face-up order and are corpse units, they are given a face-down order token if they haven't activated this round. Her 3-pip is the only one that gives orders to units other than Aiden, with 3 troopers other than Aiden. Friendly special forces can reduce their movement speed to 1 and gain steady and tactical 1 as well, which makes Aiden best if you're taking at least 1 if not 2 other special forces units with her. Agent Callus's command cards are intriguing. His flaw will be discussed in his unit breakdown. Face Me gives Callus a pretty good dual buff, and it can be used to kill or pin down an enemy commander. ISB Investigation is a trick card, and lets you force your opponent to set aside all their 1, 2, or 3 pip cards until after they choose their next command cards. It can be a game changer, as it lets you keep track of pips, and lets you control activation order. Then against armies like the Shadow Collective, where you can take 3 1 pips or 3 3 pips, this is a great way to shut them down. Ruthless Tactics, after an enemy unit defends against a ranged attack, it gains one observation token, or two observation tokens if its suppression surpasses courage. It also gives Callus a free recover, which can be extremely useful. Gideon's command cards are focused on him buffing his dark troopers. Die at my hand is a good dueling card that can pin or kill an enemy hero. You have something I want gives you a really good buff to your dark troopers unit, letting it move almost anywhere on the battlefield. A moment of consideration lets you give fire support to your core or dark trooper units. Also a pretty good buff, but a bit more situational. However, considering the dark trooper units can activate twice, this is a pretty good way to take advantage of that. Next up are the Empire's Battle Forces, starting with the Blizzard Force, as they are the only faction currently with two battle forces. The current meta, the Blizzard Force is a hard-hitting machine meant to represent the troops present at the invasion of Hoth. It lets you take Vader, Veers, or an Imperial Officer. The big reason it is part of the meta are the command cards and the four speeder bikes you can take which allow dominance across the battlefield through just sheer speed. Unrelenting Fire is an amazing buff to the Empire's suppressive gunline machine, as it makes it where the enemy can only remove one suppressive token during their rally step. Overwhelming Barrage is a great range buff to your commander unit and a decent start to the round. Debark for Ground Assault lets you get extra movement and generate even more suppressive tokens, once again leaning into the Empire's strengths. Its second battle force is the Imperial Remnant. This battle force does not have a box set. It represents the Imperial Remnant at the time of the Mandalorian. It is a little more complex to build, but it lets you bring a mix of Scout Troopers, Death Troopers, Storm Troopers, and Shore Troopers. Death Troopers and Scout Troopers count as corpse, but not as special forces. But, you can't double up on them unless you have one of every other corpse units before you take a second. You can only issue orders at range 1-2, to two, and everything outside that gains one aim or dodge token. Also, you can only bring two Dark Trooper units, technically three with Moff Gideon. 
then you really want to lean into the three Dark Trooper units that Moff Gideon lets you take. Vader has a Commander and an Operative version, so let's start off with the Commander Vader. Commander Vader is an expensive powerhouse, getting access to six different command cards he is a force to be reckoned with. Getting access to six different command cards he is a force to be reckoned with, able to take three force powers with Master of the Force is giant. He has the standard deflect, immune pierce among Jedi users. Impact 3, pierce 3, and 6 red dice is a really powerful attack, and combined with relentless makes him very good. His biggest weakness is a lack of surges for anything. Next up is Veers. General Veers is built around making your infantry and vehicles stronger. Spider 2 helps your stormtroopers get even more aim tokens. Inspire 2 is a great way to keep you from panicking. Precise 1, Surges, and Sharpshooter do make his weak shooting a little better. His command cards are the main reason to take him. Emperor Palpatine is a very powerful force user and strong commander unit. Pulling the strings that do buff a friendly trooper unit. Entourage Imperial Royal Guards allows you to get an extra order for your Royal Guards unit and bring an extra one for a free slot. Immune Pierce is your standard Force user fare. Master of the Force 2 and 3 Force slots give him a crap ton of options he can do every turn. Having Suppressive, 2 Red, Black, and White dice along with Saving on Red and both Surges make him strong and survivable. This is something that can be the core of your list without too much work on your part. The Imperial Officer is the generic Imperial Commander and is super useful for the points. It gives a generic order giver and a nice backup if your main commander dies. Spotter 1 and Inspire 1 give them a lot of buffs that Stormtroopers can take advantage of. Sharpshooter 1 and both Surges make them a lot like Veers, giving okay shooting with a solid punch. Director Krennic is an interesting commander. He is best when built around the Compel keyword, as he is a sort of Compel machine, building into the Empire's low courage and allowing you to still get things done. Cunning is an amazing buff, as well as winning priority ties whenever that comes up. Can take an extra unit or just a free slot of Imperial Death Troopers. Sharpshooter 1, Pierce 1, and both Surges make him very survivable and gives his shooting a punch that is surprisingly good and consistent. Next up on the commander line is Iden Versio. Iden Versio is an interesting commander pick. Quick thinking means she hits decently hard. Covert Ops, Marksman, and Loadout give her a lot of options with their tokens and shooting. Nimble means you're keeping that dodge token the entire time. Her other two weapon options are her TL-50 repeater, which is 2 red, 1 black, 2 white, range 3, crit 1, and impact 1. And Iden's DLT-20A rifle is an infinite range, cancels out dodge tokens, and has pierce 1, but is only black 2. Her seeker droid is a must-take, and adds a shield token that recharges at the end of each round. Agent Callus's flaw card can be played if there is a wounded Callus, and at the end of his activation he gets 4 suppression tokens. This makes Agent Callus kind of just okay. Contingencies 2 is the reason to bring him, and gives him a lot more access to your command deck as well. Cunning makes his contingencies even stronger, letting him win ties. Sharpshooter 1 and Tactical 1 gives a lot of good shooting buffs, and with an upgraded 1 red, 2 black, 1 white, lethal 1 shooting option, it makes him one of the strongest ranged Imperial commanders. Moff Gideon is amazing to take with the Imperial Remnant Battle Force. Observe 1 lets you spread out more tokens. Entourage Imperial Dark Troopers lets you spam Dark Troopers. Ruthless is a great way to get free actions into your normal Stormtroopers at pivotal moments. Sharpshooter 1 and Pierce 1 are your common commander buffs. Surge to attack and defend is a great way to give him more survivability. The Darksaber upgrade card is a much needed to keep Moff Gideon a melee threat, giving Demoralize 1, Impact 1, and Pierce 1, along with giving him Immune Pierce. And the only Empire operative that is not a bounty hunter Vader, the Emperor's Apprentice, is a very strong version of him. Giving him a good ranged attack, every other part of him is almost the same as Commander Vader, but coming in at cheaper and just one health less, he's a good take. Taking him as a current meta pick in the Blizzard Force due to his extra attack abilities, and the fun upgrade cards you can give him that make him even better. Starting off with our Corpse Breakdown is your basic Stormtrooper. Stormtroopers are your backbone of the Empire gun line, amazing for the price and easily upgradable. With Precise 1, you want to keep up aim token generation and surge to crit is very useful. DLT-19 is one of two default upgrades and adds two red dice to the attack pool. HH-12 is a decent anti-vehicle weapon with Black 3 and Impact 3, but not very useful as it is cumbersome so you can't move and shoot. 
Next up is the Stormtrooper Expansion. The Stormtrooper Expansion gives you four unique upgrades, the Captain, Specialist, T-21, and RT-97C Stormtroopers. The Stormtrooper Captain gains your training upgrade slot and makes you immune to suppression for one turn. It does not, however, affect being panicked. The Specialist gives you a gear upgrade and allows you to gain one aim or surge token. It is also exhaustible, so it needs to be recovered before being able to use it again. The T-21 is a 4 white dice gunner that is range 3 and gives you critical 2, which lets you convert 2 surges to crit. The RT-97C is a 1 red 4 white dice gunner with no other buffs. Next up are the Snow Troopers. The Snow Troopers are your slow moving, heavy hitting units. 2 speed 1 moves equal a speed 3 move, so double moving these guys and getting shots off is still very doable. The Flame Trooper upgrade is the reason to take this. It adds Blast and Spray, which ignores cover and gives 1 black dice for each mini in the defending unit. The T7 Ion Trooper is not that good, as it is a one-time use exhaustible card that has one black, two white, impact one, ion one card. It is not good to take considering the Empire has better anti-tank elsewhere. And the reason I say one-time use is spending an action to recover on Snow Troopers is not really worth it. You want to keep them moving and shooting. It could be situationally used, but in reality, it's, it's just not the best. The Shore Troopers are a slightly more expensive, but still surprisingly hard-hitting corpse unit. Emplacement Trooper does help them spread orders around to the mortars they can take with them. With Target 1, you have aim token generation but sacrifice precision. However, you are hitting on blacks instead of white dice, so they do technically hit harder. Their T21B is a 2 black, 2 white dice mini that is critical 1, so it is not a bad way to get a gun line set up. The question is if you can fit them in instead of normal stormtroopers. The DF90 mortar is an interesting long range unit. It has to be taken with normal short troopers as it can't be taken on its own. They are really good at sending out suppression at high range. Fire support can be useful, but usually you want them activating to get an aim token. Reposition gives you a free pivot, and critical 1, cumbersome, and suppressive are definitely an interesting combo for a range 4 mortar. Next up is the Imperial Specialist Expansion. This comes with 4 minis, the Imperial Officer, Comms Technician, R4 Astromech, and FX9 Medical Droid. The Imperial Officer increases Courage by 1 and gains Inspire 1. The Comms Technician gains an additional upgrade option you have to equip. The R4 Astromech Droid has Repair 1, Capacity 2, so it can only be used twice in game, but it can repair your vehicles. The FX-9 Medical Droid has Treat Capacity 2, so it's a pretty decent medic to get two models back into a unit. Starting with our Special Forces Breakdown, we have the Scout Troopers. Having Scout 3, Sharpshooter 1, and Low Profile, they fit an interesting fast-moving slot for the Empire. And for 48 points, having a default 8 black dice is pretty good. With Scout 3, they can get in range to launch their 8 dice attack pretty quick, so they can be worth taking just for that. The DOT 19X Sniper is a good range 4 addition to the unit, keeping the 2 black dice and giving high velocity and pierce 1 is fantastic. Sonic Charge Saboteur is a good way to drop a mine and limit enemy movement options, but with only 1 red and 1 black dice, it is not the best. The Strike Team is very similar to the normal Scouts. The only real reason to take this is to bring the Sniper and use it as a long range threat or an activation filler. The Voyal Guards are an amazing guardian with good melee. Charge gives them an amazing melee with a move 2. One red, one black attack dice are pretty good, and the Electro Staff Guard adds two black dice and immune pierce to the squad. They are a decent Jedi Sith Killer unit, and pretty good at keeping your commander alive. The Death Troopers are a zone controlling nightmare for enemy armies. Disciplined 1 and 2 Courage means suppression is hard to get on them. Precise 2 makes you hit on almost everything. Ready 1 gets you that aim token for precise 2. The E11D is a free upgrade that gives 1 red dice at range 1 to 2 with blast, and 1 black dice at range 1 to 4 with suppressive. The DLT 190 trooper adds a range 4, 2 red, 1 white, 1 impact attack. The DFT 16 adds a range 3, 1 white, 1 black compel keyword, which is intriguing, as compel will really just help you completely ignore being suppressed. The Imperial Special Forces in the Special Forces slot are an interesting choice, as it gives them some infiltrating troops. Marksman and Reliable 1 give them a way to pop off crits or convert misses and failed saves. The T21 Special Forces adds a 4 white dice attack, critical 2 mini. The critical 2 converts to crits, so not as good as impact, but not too bad either. The Imperial Special Forces Infernal Squad is an intriguing way to handle a Special Forces character unit as it brings in two named characters and all the buffs from the original Special Forces. Dell and Gideon can be taken on most normal Stormtrooper corpse units as buffs. Retinue Iden Versio can be pretty useful if used right. 
Del Minko has a range 5, 2 black dice attack. He also has a repair 2, capacity 1, high velocity, and lethal 1. So it fits an interesting little bit there. Gideon Hask has a range 3, 2 red dice special attack that has coordinated trooper, which helps get you an extra order out if this unit has been issued an order. Starting with our support, the 74-Z Speeder Bikes. A current meta choice, the Speeder Bikes are a solid unit. With a good mix of attacks at all angles and surge to crit and defend, they hit consistently. They are strongest in speed and simplicity. They do well at what they do, and when taken in groups of four, can dominate the battlefield with Blizzard Force. Please don't do this to your friends. The E-Web Heavy Blaster team is a good ranged zone controller. The E-Web has a good standby range and wants to give itself one every turn. Reposition and move one lets you keep your dangerous gun fixed in the right direction, but cumbersome means you can't shoot on a turn you moved with your main gun. Surge to hits is useful, especially with something that's mainly going to be shooting all game long. With 4 health and a red save, you are risking it a little. They can be taken out with just some focused fire on them. The Dewback Rider is a slow moving almost tank. Armor 1 gives you a good way to auto save 1 normal hits. Relentless gives you a free attack action, reposition. Spur lets you get your movement up to take a suppression token, and Unhindered gives you the abilities to really take advantage of. Relentless, as everything is kind of just here to make it so you can get that attack in. You can take one of three guns, the RT-97C, which is one red, three white dice, the CR-24 Flame Rifle, which is one black, one white for every mini in the defending unit, and the T-21, which is four white dice and critical two. Starting our heavy support is the ATSD. The ATSD is a solid tank choice for the Empire. It has good armor and weak point positioning. Arsenal 2 is useful with all of its attacks. It has four different pilot options, which can give it a surge to crit, a field commander, and tactical one. It has three different upgrade guns, the first of which is the grenade launcher, which gives two black dice range two weapon. The mortar is a range four to infinite range and is three white dice and suppressive. The twin light blast is impact one, range three, one red, black, and white dice. So, a decent kinda anti-vehicle thing, but not as good as your main blaster cannon. The TX-225 Combat Assault Tank is an interesting ground transport for the Empire. Armor cancels out all normal hits, which is really useful. Arsenal 2 is useful with all of its attacks. It has four different pilot options, which can give it Surge to crit, a Field Commander, or just Tactical 1. For an open transport, you do risk losing some of what you're transporting when you get shot at. It has two unique options. The DLT-19 is a 2 red Impact 1 gun, and the RT-97C is a 1 red 3 white gun. The only other iffy part about this unit is the weak point sides, as it's really easy to flank a tank, so be careful with positioning with it. The LAAT slash LE is sadly not the lat you're thinking of. Armor and arsenal give it a good amount of staying power. Cover and hover keep it alive and mobile. Its immune list is very useful, and transport one closed means you need to take something in this to make it worth the point investment, but you're not losing models when they get shot at. It has three unique pilots. One gives field commander and token generation. One increases speed by one. And the last gives it a marksman and, after recovering, a free aim token. It has three generic vehicle weapon upgrades. Armor piercing is one red, two black, and a good anti-vehicle. Bunker buster is one red, three white, good anti-infantry. And high energy is two red, one white, and is used to cancel out dodges. And the last and most probably overpowered unit of the Empire, in my opinion, are the Dark Troopers. The Dark Troopers are dangerous and one of the best units the Empire has. Armor is amazing on an infantry unit, and plotting means no double moving. However, Unstoppable is the reason to take these. These can activate twice in a battle round, which is a game changer. They have three unique weapons and can take two of them at once. The XS-4 Assault Cannon is four black dice, critical one. The SM-9 Frag is two red, one black, cycle card that is blast and impact two. The Myrtleizer is 2 red, 1 black, suppressive melee weapon. This is a plotting, unstoppable unit that will kill a lot of your stuff no matter what you do. Best countered with impact. And they have been taken to a lot of really good extremes in recent time. And finishing this out is a possible Empire list. I have been on a Rogue One binge lately. So here we have a Director Krennic, some Shore Troopers, a Mortar Trooper, a whole bunch of Death Troopers, and an ATSD. This is a list I am debating getting, as I don't chase the meta, I don't go crazy, I just look and go, I want to have a garrison on Scarif and build around that. If this interests you, and if anything I've said about the Empire interests you, you should jump right into them. 
They are a pretty good army and have been consistently solid since the start of Star Wars Legion. Once again, thank you to everyone for watching this video. Your support is appreciated, and if you'd leave a like, comment, and subscribe, that would be amazing. I'm sorry this video has come out a little later than normal. I try to upload every Tuesday and Saturday, and this is kind of a last little bit I've added on, so while editing this, I'm currently unsure if it actually is going to come up on Saturday, due to just me not feeling good today and fighting sickness, so if this is up on whenever, thank you. Have a wonderful day all, and I hope you enjoyed the video.